Hello my soccer universe. Yeah, I just did a Serie A review, but I looked over my calendar and I saw that I'm a little bit off schedule with the Serie A and doing it on Thursday or Friday. And since Serie A, except for next week, which actually all the other leagues that I'm covering um, play a Monday evening game, which uh, at least one, which would put me a little bit into scheduling trouble because on the 14th I'm not very much available. Let's see how I will handle it, but other than that, Serie A rounds always end on a Sunday. And on a Monday I rarely have something to um, post because there are always these Monday game hangovers. So I thought, well, I switch Serie A reviews on Monday, which also allow me to go midweek and weekend really nicely to do that. Although I'm not only doing one round. And then I can do La Liga uh, on Tuesday morning. And I'll do the Premier League then Thursday or Friday whenever their round ends. Also do to the FA Cup being in there. So I think it's a little bit of a better schedule for me. And yeah, um, it was a great Serie A weekend to top it off. So I'm more than happy to talk about that. I am wearing now a black Milan jersey when Milan won in a black jersey. So <laughs> I'm quite psyched about that. Although we'll see in the implications. Maybe uh, that was one of the wins where you're very happy that your favorite team won but it affected the championship so much that it might well be over but i know i went into this knowing already ahead of the game and yeah let's talk about it and I'll, let's see it started saturday it was all about two games it was juve torino the turin derby and lazio milan those were the two games that i looked forward to and it was uh, pretty, pretty, pretty clear that um, I was hoping that Torino gets a result so that I can, how to say, innocently cheer for Milan. <laughs> because I knew if Juve win and then uh, Milan win, this means Juve is seven clear on top and we don't really have a title race anymore. Although, we'll see about that. Anyway, uh, my hopes for a result between you and Torino were already smashed after not even three minutes when after Cuetorado uh, assists Dybala goes into in the box very similar as he did against Genoa. It takes a wicked deflection, makes it 1-0. Um, after Ronaldo assists, and I thought Ronaldo wants to get it back when I saw it, Cuetorado makes it 2 and 29th In between, uh, Torino had some mini chances, tried to keep the game open, but it was not really ha happening. They do get a penalty in stoppage time. Uh, I think it was for handball. I, I, I don't recall now. Where Belotti makes it 2-1. Uh, and I thought, yeah, game on. They even uh, score the 2-2, but it was an offside and really had some uh, some chance. Oh, no, did they score it? At least they had some chances. But I think it was a call, a call, a call of sides. You know, that's the problem with me making those videos. I should make it the day after and then compile them together. Maybe this is what I'm going to do. But I know that there was a chance for making it 2-2, but then there's a free kick given 61st minute outside of the box. And who steps up? Cristiano Ronaldo. And he smashes it into the net. His first free kick goal for Juventus and his first converted free kick. I want to say since the World Cup. Definitely, he uh, in in for Juve he definitely hasn't done it, and I'm also uh, quite certain that for Real Madrid it has been a long time, and then an own goal um, through Gigi seals the deal. But at that moment, uh, everything was done and dusted, and I have to say Juve starts really looking undeniable. Uh, so solo Lecce, I only saw highlights, but that was an entertaining game. Um, where Caputo gives uh, Sassuolo an early lead, then Lugioni uh, gets equal, it's 1-1 one, one at the half. Uh, a Berardi penalty sees Sassuolo going uh, ahead, but Lecce doesn't give up. And uh, Mancoso in the 67th, so just a few minutes later, equalizes. But then Jeremy Boga and Mert Müldür make it 4-2 for Sassuolo. But that uh, would have been a um, kind of entertaining match. I don't want to say that Lazio Milan was an entertaining match. It was rather even for the first 20 minutes with, I think, slight advantages for Lazio. However, Lazio was playing without their two strikers, uh, Immobile and Caicedo, and I think Milan was just feasting on it. Milan has uh, now the strength of being uh, rather solid on the back and then striking on the counter-attack. Count, count, count and Cialanoglio took a deflection 
get with a shot the 1-0 for Milan. So uh, I was kind of happy to see that. Unfortunately, uh, he later on injured himself and had to be replaced. He has been a better, one of the better players. Uh, players for Milan. Ibrahimovic I think scored one that was ruled out for offside but then a penalty was given uh, for Milan, rightfully so, and Zlatan slammed it home luckily. I mean this really hit the goalie right here between the arm and the leg where he just cannot do much. And it's 2-0 for Milan at the half and very well uh, on, on the way of pulling an upset. Although. It was one that you could see coming for the simple reason that Milan has been playing not all that bad except for the Lecce game and Lazio really always needed a lot of work uh, to get their wins if they uh, got it. And then Rebic makes it 3-0 in uh, fifth night. That seals the deal and Milan gets a good win. One that all boosts their goal difference, which has been hor horrible ever since the visit to Atalanta. I mean, Milan was not a great goal, goal, goal score machine to begin with. So yeah, um, I know that Ibrahimovic went out uh, injured at the half. The, uh, Re uh, Rebic came on for him. Uh, so, I, so I don't know about him, but I, actually I have to say it almost doesn't really matter whether he plays or not. Yes! He is this icon uh, on front and he kind of um, really gives a good uh, atmosphere in the room because he can, you know, he said, I'm the superstar, I've done this. But on the other side, Milan has been playing well with Rebic, Rebic on front. Uh, I'm more worried if Rebic and Ibrahimovic are out, of course. Um, for the Sunday games, I mean, Inter against Polonia was crazy. Uh, Inter looked in full control of the game all the time. I only saw highlights, but it was just unbelievable. Uh, Lukaku, after um, Lautaro Martinez, uh, hits the post, Lukaku uh, converts the rebound, and then there are many chances, uh, Martinez, uh, most of them, that Inter could extend the lead. They cannot get there. Then they get even out now another break because Soriano is giving a red card for um, complaining at the ref sent off so clear advantage into already a better team having full control of, of of the game then they get a penalty which is saved uh lateral uh takes the penalty and the end and it is saved and then uh yuvara from out of nowhere i mean it was a nice shot scores in 74th the equalizer and then bastoni gets himself as himself sent off with a uh, yellow red card and everything starts to unravel for uh inter at that point bologna actually caught themselves a little bit and musa Barro, uh, gets the winner in the 80th minute this is one of those losses that bologna seemingly has a little bit inter's number but this is something that you see uh Inter having over and over again, this is what's preventing them from taking the next step to be a little bit more consistent and get those arg arguments. This is not the first time that I'm saying Inter threw away game. Although, maybe it's a little bit uh, justice because they just won against Parma like that, where Parma had, had them in the back. Now they have Bologna in the back, they lose to Bologna. Uh, of the other games, I saw some of Cagliari Atalanta, which was a rather uh, nice open game. Uh, where uh, Cagliari had a goal by ruled out for, um, by Simeone for a stupid handball decision that I think this rule has to be looked at again uh, because he does not go with the hand to the ball, the, he, the ball comes on, 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 on his hand, totally involuntary and a really great goal is ruled out. Um, Atalanta was slightly, the slightly better team but you know they made seven changes so it was kind of uh, hard um, to find the Atalanta uh, fluidity. They played in the nice away jerseys. They won the I just, I just go. Um, but I think it really turned towards Atalanta when Carboni was sent off for a second yellow. This was the second yellow card of the game and it's, it's to the same, same player. Then a penalty that was in uh, the for the penalty they found. Foul, um, Luis uh, Muriel steps, steps up and makes it 1-0 Atalanta and Atalanta can hang on for the rest of the game. I think they had more chances. Um, also, Kallir was in there, but it was not an overall great game. But again, if you make seven changes from your regular lineup, uh, was to be expected. I probably should have switched over to another game, but I said, I'm going to watch Atalanta now uh, regularly. 
uh, the game that we have to talk about uh, is just the penalty game between Parma and Fiorentina. All three goals scored by penalties. Uh, the first two uh, for Fiorentina. I think the first penalty we don't need to discuss uh, much about. The second one, I have to tell you, uh, yes, there is a little bit the arm going into the neck. Honestly, that's a judgment call. I don't know. It uh, didn't look uh, really weird. And also the penalty for Parma was similar. No one knew what's going to happen here. So I have to say those two penalties, I think it was kind of a concession to each other. And then uh, Fiorentina hangs on to a rare win over Parma. And Parma, having now two losses loss in a row, was also um, it, it was great round for Milan, I have to say. Because uh, Brescia beats uh, Verona 2-0. Two, two we have Sampdoria beating Spal 3-0. Udin and Genoa play out a 2-2 draw. And then the other big game, the Derby della Sola between Napoli and Roma. I have to say, wonderful jersey matchup. And I looked last week whether I can still get, because the blue Roma, Roma jersey, I cannot really find the third jersey anymore. But And the uh, away jersey, I also thought is kind of sold out. And then I found it in the Nike store for with some reductions for 38 euros. So it's on the way. Very happy about that one. Uh, the game itself was even, uh, but Napoli always seemed to be like the more mature team. Uh, Roma just doesn't look right. I really hope, I really hope that they give the coach um, a little bit more patience and don't fire him straight, straight away. I think there is something uh, growing at Roma. Callejon after Amari Rui assist just just, just as I thought oh this might pit out in a nil nil draw gives uh, Na Napoli lead and then a um, long range shot from Mkhitaryan in the 60th equalizes almost immediately and I thought yeah it's dead even even again it might be headed for a draw which is exactly what I actually would have loved to see uh, and being a uh, Milan fan but then with a re admittedly really nice goal Insigne gets the winner for Napoli. This means now in the table, um, you will seven points clear. I think everything points now to Juve. Uh, there's a caveat though, but let's see. The The thing is that the schedule for Juve head is not the easiest one, which might make things interesting. Um, Atalanta winning, Inter losing, meaning that Atalanta is actually going in touch uh, with Inter Third place seems possible for Atalanta, and if Lazio doesn't recover, actually I think Atalanta would get a well-deserved second place in there. I don't think Atalanta can challenge for a title, although they're giving a minimum chance. The race for the Europa League spots also, I mean, it's Roma Napoli now level on points, um, and Milan just uh, behind. I actually have a feeling that Milan, although I have not the easiest schedule, Milan could actually get... Uh, ahead of Napoli and Roma, uh, especially Roma is not playing all that great as of late. Verona uh, shot, shot themselves a foot in, in, in the foot with a loss to Brescia. Uh, then it's kind of a dense midfield, Bologna, Sassuolo, Cali, Parma. Uh, Fiorentina looks, I think, r safe. That's the last team that's safe. Then uh, the next three um, it really needs to. The Sampdoria, Udine and Torino uh, get into the relegation battle. I think there needs to be really something seriously going wrong. Geno is the one where I'm a little bit worried, but I think the last three... Uh, actually, the way Lech is playing, I would love to see them go, going in. But I said there's a little twist in there uh, with Juve being 7.7 because uh, Lazio lost to Milan and now in the next round Milan is playing at home to Juve, which is a huge game. Should Juve win that, that one, I think then it's probably done. Um, yes, they have to play still Atalanta, they have to play still Lazio, but they need to trip up at a few few places. And that seems to be one of those last stumbling blocks. Uh, Milan, especially if Lazio win before, then this would give Lazio some momentum again. And remember, when Lazio won the championship, they were actually having a big, um, having to catch Juve with a big gap from before. Uh, other than that, I have to see what Roma and Parma are doing. Um, this is one, one of the games I usually look forward to in the schedule, but this time around, both have now lost twice. Let's see, and Verona, Inter, that seems also a big matchup. Anyway, so that's from the midweek uh, in Italy. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. Let me know what you watched and whether you agree with my assessment of these games. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.
Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!